Shemuel Bet, Chapter 19. Trembling, the king went up to the room over the gate, weeping and crying, O oh, my son Absalom, my son, my son Absalom, if only I had died instead of you, O oh, Absalom, my son, my son. Yoav was told, The king is weeping, mourning for Absalom. Thus the victory that day was turned into mourning for all the people. For the people heard it said that day, that the king was grieving for his son, so that the people entered the city furtively that day, the way that people who are ashamed creep away when fleeing a battlefield. Meanwhile, the king covered his face and cried aloud, O oh, my son Absalom, O oh, Absalom, my son, my son. Yoav went inside to the king and said, Today you made all your servants feel ashamed. They saved your life today and the lives of your sons, daughters, wives, and concubines. But you love those who hate you and hate those who love you. Today you said that princes and servants mean nothing to you. For I can see today that it would have pleased you more if Absalom had lived today and we had all died. Now get up, go out and speak heart to heart with your servants. For I swear by Adonai that if you don't go out, not one man will stay here with you tonight. And that you will, and that will be worse for you than all the misfortunes you have suffered from your youth until now. So the king got up and sat in the city gateway, and when all the people were told, Now the king is sitting in the gate, they came before the gate. The king, they came before the king. Meanwhile Israel had fled, each man to his tent, and throughout all the tribes of Israel there was dissension among all the people. They were saying, The king delivered us from the power of our enemies, and he saved us from the power of the Pilishtim. But now he has fled the land to escape Absalom. However, Absalom, whom we anointed to rule us, is dead in battle. So now, why doesn't anyone suggest bringing the king back? King David sent this message to Tzadok and Eviatar, the Kohanim. Ask the leaders of Yehuda, why are you the last to bring the king back to his palace? The king has already heard that all Israel wants to return him to his palace. You are my kinsman, my flesh and bone, so why are you the last to bring back the king? Also tell Amasa, you are my flesh and bone. May God bring terrible curses on me and worse ones yet, if from now on you are not permanent commander of my army instead of Yoav. Thus he turned the hearts of all the men of Yehuda around as if they were one man, so, they, so that they sent a message to the king, Come back, you and all your servants. The king started back and arrived at the Yarden, while Yehuda came to Gilgal in order to meet the king and bring the king over the Yarden. Shimi, the son of Gera, the Binyami from Bahurim, hurried and came down with the men of Yehuda to meet King David. There were a thousand men of Binyamin with him, also Teziva, the servant of the house of Shaul with his fifteen sons and twenty servants, and they rushed into the yard and ahead of the king, to ferry the king's household across and do whatever else the king wanted done. Shimi, the son of Gera, fell down before the king when he was ready to cross the yard and, and said to the king, May my lord not hold me guilty of a crime. Don't remember the wrong your servant did on the day my lord the king left Jerusalem. May the king not take it to heart, for your servant knows that I have sinned. Therefore, look, I am the first one of all the house of Yosef to come today and go down to meet my lord the king. Avishai, the son of Tezeruya, answered, Shouldn't she may be put to death for this? After all, he cursed Adonai's anointed ruler. But David said, What do I have in common with you, you sons of Tezeruya? Why have you become my adversaries today? Shouldn't an, should anyone in Israel be put to death today? Don't I know that today I am king over Israel? Then the king said to Shimi, You will not be put to death, and the king swore it to him. Mephibosheth, the son of Shaul, came down to meet the king. He hadn't cared for his legs, trimmed his beard, or washed his clothes from the day he, the king had left until the day he came home in peace. When he came to Jerusalem to meet the king, the king said to him, why didn't you go with me, Mephibosheth? He answered, My lord king, my servant deceived me. I, your servant, had said, I will saddle a donkey for myself to ride on and go, go with the king, since your servant is lame. But he slandered me, your servant, to my lord the king. However, my lord the king is like an angel of God, so do whatever seems right to you. 
for all my father's household deserved death at the hand of my lord the king. Nevertheless, you placed your servant with those who eat at your own table. I deserve nothing more, so why should I come crying any more to the king? The king said to him, Why speak any more about these matters of yours? I say, you and Teziva divide the land. Mephibosheth said to the king, Indeed, let him take it all. For me it's enough that my lord the king has come home in peace. Barzillai the Giladi had come down from Roglim and passed on to the Arden, with the king to bring him across the Arden. Barzillai was a very old man, eighty years old. He had provided for the king's needs when he was staying at Machanaim, for he was a wealthy man. The king said to Barzillai, Come on across with me, and I will provide for your needs with me in Jerusalem." Barzillai said to the king, How much longer can I live that I should go up with the king to Jerusalem? I am now eighty years old. Can I tell good from bad? Can your servant even taste what he eats or drinks? Can I hear the voice of men and women singing any more? Why should your servant burden my lord the king? Your servant only wants to cross the yard and with the king. Why should the king reward this so generously? Please, just let your servant go back and die in my own city, near the grave of my father and mother. But here is your servant, Kimham. Let him cross with my lord the king and do for him whatever seems good to you. The king answered, Kimham will cross with me, and I will do for him whatever seems good to you. Whatever you ask of me, I will do for you. So all the people crossed the yard, and the king crossed too. The king kissed Barzillai and blessed him. Then he returned to his home. The king crossed over to Gilgal, and Kimham crossed with him. All the people of Yehuda brought the king across, as did half the people of Israel. Now all the men of Israel came to the king and said to him, Why have our kinsmen, the men of Yehuda, stolen you away and brought the king and his household across the Yarden, and all David's men with him? All the men of Yehuda answered the men of Israel, Because the king is our close relative, why are you angry about this? Have we eaten anything at the king's expense? Has any gift been given to us? The men of Israel answered the men of Yehuda, We have ten shares in the king. Also we have more right in David than you. So why did you despise us? Weren't we the first to suggest bringing our king back? But the men of Yehuda spoke more vehemently than the men of Israel. End of Second Samuel chapter 19